in the wake of Tesla's most recent 3-to-1 split. Though not at an apparent ideal rate, many investors are fairly enthusiastic about the stock's future performance. In the previous month, the chart for Tesla's stock price increased. At the time this video was being filmed, it was trading about $300 per share for a stock that traded for less than $5 back in 2011. That is quite astounding. While some analysts contend that Tesla is doing well in terms of stock valuation, others, like Gordon Johnson, hold a different opinion. The stock research suggests that Tesla may only be worth $22. As Gordon Johnson, however, made this statement specifically in reference to Tesla stock. In this video, let's find out. To stay up with everything happening with Tesla research, don't forget to like, subscribe, and enable notifications if you enjoy this kind of information. In a recent interview with CNBC, Tesla's CEO and creator Gordon Johnson shared his assessment of the stock's true value. The evaluation of Wall Street, who has long held a negative outlook for Tesla shares, has claimed that the stock is only worth $22. Even after the three-for-one stock split, this is far less than the price of Tesla stock today. Gordon Johnson, who believes that Tesla stock is somewhat overvalued, is renowned for setting extremely low price estimates for the stock. The stock research has previously advised investors to liquidate their shares of Tesla because it was a growing firm that was hardly growing, and now he's explained some of the grounds for his conviction. He also outlined the reasons why Tesla stock is undervalued compared to its current market price. To acquire all the details, you should, however, watch until the very end. The CEO claims that Tesla is losing significant market share in each of its markets. According to Johnson, the automaker lost between 11 and 8% of its market share in China and around 10% of its market share in the US during the first and second quarters of the year. To support his argument, he also said that Tesla faces high production costs, particularly with its batteries, and may find it challenging to reduce costs. Johnson continued, Tesla is gradually losing its lead time significantly in countries like China and the company's capacity is above its demand. He thinks that increased market competition is what is causing the demand issue for EV manufacturers. Johnson claims that Tesla no longer has a production advantage. He thinks that a number of rivals have real-world range and quality that are comparable to or better than Tesla's, as well as interior improvements and comparable to or faster charging times. He added that Tesla is the least dependable car and is ranked second to bottom in quality by Consumer Reports. Johnson is of the belief that not everyone wants a Tesla, as most of these studies indicate, despite the fact that this may be refuted by numerous other stock analyses. As a result of Tesla losing its competitive edge in production quality, he continued, it is only natural that deliveries are falling, which is a major concern for investors and Tesla boosters. Although Johnson is an expert in long-term analysis and his claims may seem credible, there are a few reasons to give this assertion some additional consideration. Johnson asserts that Tesla is losing market share and may continue to do so as a result of manufacturing delays, even if he thinks the business has a demand issue. Additionally, he asserts that future price reductions for Tesla's electric cars may be achievable. Given that a fall in the price of Tesla's EV can be driven by a decrease in production cost, which is actually one of the company's aims, it can be concluded that Johnson still believes that Tesla can potentially overcome its current market issues. Similar to the delayed delivery, it merely shows that Tesla is building additional vehicles. Johnson claimed during the interview that Tesla's factories in Texas and Berlin are hardly producing any vehicles. There are some grounds to think otherwise. The manufacturer has worked nonstop to increase production at its Giga factories throughout the world. Despite being idle for the majority of the first quarter, its Shanghai factory recently reached the 3 million car manufacturing milestone. Undoubtedly, Tesla saw a decrease in its production capacity, which had a big negative impact on the expansion of its deliveries. The EV manufacturer did, though, manage to build a sizable number of vehicles in the year's first two quarters. In the first quarter of 2022, Tesla delivered 310,048 automobiles, and in the second quarter, 254,695 vehicles. Nevertheless, because of a 17.9% fall in auto deliveries in the first and second quarters, some investors, like Gordon Johnson, have been lowering their pricing and expectations for the stock. Based on automobile production and delivery, 
Some analysts continue to be bullish. One may argue that Tesla is trying to improve things. Elon Musk, the company's CEO, recently dropped indications about Tesla's intention to construct 10 to 12 additional gigafactories. This is an effort to reach Tesla's goal of producing 20 million vehicles by 2030. According to Musk, the business wants to produce 1.5 to 2 billion units per facility. If this is accomplished, Tesla might successfully meet its car demand, and investors are likely to profit greatly from its shares. As previously mentioned, while some investors, like Johnson, are gloomy on Tesla stock, there are others who think the automaker is performing far better than its rivals. In the same interview, Gene Munster, managing partner of Loop Funds, expressed a different opinion from Johnson's. He hinted at Tesla as a company with better growth rates and a huge potential market, according the analysis. In the following five years, Tesla may reach a stage where their income can go from $70 billion to $400 billion, he continued. According to Munster, Tesla has the potential for phenomenal growth because the firm not only produces automobiles but also solar energy and has plans to enter the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning HVAC industry. And he thinks that no other automaker is acting in this way. Don Ives, a Wedbush analyst, recently disclosed that demand is not Tesla's issue. The business is doing everything it can to reduce the supply. Ives claimed that the supply of Tesla vehicles has been and is still increasing. Additionally, the corporation has increased output at its Berlin and Austin facilities. While Model Y production in China has advanced to the next level, the EV manufacturer will have a significant advantage over its rivals if it is able to deliver 2 million cars by 2023, he continued. Gordon Johnson will undoubtedly disagree with these estimates because the stock analysis has consistently questioned Tesla's ability to satisfy demand. At one point in 2020, the research predicted that Tesla would see a decline in the number of vehicles sold during the fourth quarter of that year. He also questioned Tesla's delivery of a vehicle to Hertz, a major rental car company. To increase its rental fleet, the auto company has bought 100,000 Model 3 vehicles. Furthermore, the majority of studies in Tesla shareholders have doubts about the delivery's viability. But after Hertz announced that the Model 3 deliveries for its Uber fleet were taking place, Johnson quickly reaffirmed Tesla's reliability. According to a Wall Street investigation, Tesla's new Panasonic batteries are similar to laptop batteries and are therefore not the best choice for electric vehicles. By increasing productivity and dependability, the Japanese battery manufacturer Panasonic said it will boost Tesla's lithium-ion battery cell manufacturing by 10% by 2024. Although Tesla claims that this sum won't even be perceptible given how quickly the EV battery market grows, it is still a step in the right direction in terms of resolving Tesla's battery issue. Additionally, even though Johnson asserted that Tesla had no prototypes of its Model 3 or Model I, these EVs surpassed expectations in the market. By trading volume and income, the Model 3 and Model Y emerged as the most popular cars in the world. Since there is more competition on the market, it is to be expected that Tesla's manufacturing and delivery schedules, as well as its automobiles, will be under more scrutiny. Although Gordon Johnson may have good arguments for why Tesla may be overvalued and why shareholders might need to sell their shares, the stock of Tesla still has room to rise. Due to Tesla's difficulty obtaining batteries, Johnson recommended Tesla investors to sell their shares in 2013, but the stock has since increased by more than 2,000%. Investors would have suffered a big loss if they had sold their shares at that time. This does not imply that Tesla's stock price will rise like other stocks will. Typically, there is a mix of positive and negative developments. And given that so many of Tesla's goals were not achieved, it may be problematic for Tesla investors if the automaker is unable to boost car production and delivery while also securing its position as a major EV player. What do you think of Gordon Johnson's estimate of the stock price for Tesla? Can the shares of the EV manufacturer truly be worth $22? Tell us in the comments section below. Click on one of these two videos on your screen while you are still here. Hello there.